Hello YouTube, same by here. We're gonna continue the previous tutorial. Okay, this will be part two. As you can see, this is what we did on the previous tutorial. We're able to connect by using the component that we got from this guy here, this table, by dragging and dropping it there. And so we were able to insert. Let me fix this spelling mistake like this inside okay but then I f there's something I forgot to mention on the first video sometimes it happens that when you test let's click modify here when you test the application even though everything is successful I mean the username is correct the password is correct everything is correct the moment you click test there's a possibility you might not get succeeded okay if it complains with DP driver something it's simple the solution is very very simple this you're gonna take this leap my SQL dot DLL and put it under Windows or system 32 like this under Windows here you're gonna put this DLL file here or under system 32 here okay that's all and then it should be able to myself I already did that so that is why it was it was able to connect successful okay by default the first time you do this it's gonna give you that error message I'm talking about actually I think it's best if I show you how, how the message look like so I'm gonna go to Windows. Let me look for lip. I'm gonna remove also this one. Here, slip my SQL here. I'm gonna delete these two files here. Continue. I'm gonna show you if it fails it's gonna give you this other error message or exception and then you should be able to fix it <coughs> come on what takes you longer to delete just two simple files it takes forever okay there we go and also if I'm not mistaken I took them to system 32 so we're gonna go and look for lip my SQL. It should be somewhere it should be somewhere here. Lip there we go. I'm gonna delete it. Lip my SQL continue. Once you successfully remove them or in your case you want to remove them okay so you can see that mpacadero red studio for windows is is using this file as you can see this action cannot be completed because the file is opened in mpacadero red studio for windows meaning that for, for mpacadero to successfully connect to my sql database it needs this lib my sql.dll file okay so if you don't have it it's gonna fail it's not gonna it's not gonna connect okay so that is why in case you get that error you should know that you need this dll file you can download it from the internet and then you're gonna put it under system 32 and then from there it should work successful your test should be successful okay so now we want to insert data on or we already inserted we want to delete update and do the rest okay we want to collect the data now we want to use the select statement so we want to put a list 
Esta espada, voy a poner para ti. Put in here, and I, I put the, the list box. The list box here. You can also use data away components, but in my case, I'm gonna just gonna show you how to write the code to collect the, the records from the database and bring them to your form. Okay. So I'm gonna come. I don't know why every time I put. Okay. Let's all around this table here. Okay, just like that, and then okay, and then now notice that when we were doing insert, we used execute to ex successfully execute the the SQL statement but now for the select you are not going to need to execute okay because now select will return the results okay but this one does not return results it just executes this statement once and for all and then that's that's all but as for the select statement this query component will contain the results after this statement was okay so we're gonna go like uh, come on if you can use active is equal to true the moment you say active because it's true this statement will get executed and then all the results will be stored here will be stored under this query okay so you can use the results while the query is holding them and then once you are done using the results you want to say active is false okay you can also use open and close I don't usually use it you know so the moment you say false you mean you are done now using the results that are contained inside this query so now but now we have to use the results here to use the result first you have to know if the query was able to get the results to do that is simple uh, do like this if it's not at the end come on come on come on if it's not at the end of the file end of what the hell is happening here cross space end of file if it's not at the end of the file meaning it has results okay Yeah, else it has no records. So okay, so we wanna show me say saying no records, okay? Okay. So now that contains the results inside here. I can't even type. Good. So now we can now read those results, okay? So it's easy. There are two ways, but we're gonna go with the simplest one, okay? Mm. You want the username and you want the password. Okay. But you can also declare this thing globally so that we don't we don't uh, keep on declaring. So since I did that I'm gonna remove this. Yeah, good. So you can now say you can now direct the query to go to the first record, okay? Like this. So now the query will go to the first record, okay? So we know that it already test records. You can say do 
while is not at the end of the five okay meaning you can say do while it contains the okay while not at the end of the five so now here get the record okay after you got the record you wanna you're gonna do like this after you got the record you got you will always need to go to the next record okay so if there are five records if there are five records for example on the court on those on that table you can then this statement will direct the code to go to the first record after you cut the first record here as we are going to get the the first record you want to go next meaning go to the second record it will keep on looping but once it's done it will know that now it's at the end of the file okay once it gets to the end of the file it will not quit this loop okay but you always need to deactivate it at the end okay so here we go we want to get the username username is equal to we're gonna get the username from the query query dot field field values here like this so you know which column that contains the username on the table is this column called user okay so this column is from the that from that table okay so if you wrote username in full you're gonna here you're gonna write username again in full so p when it contains the password so p here is the password like like this so now you can now use the u and p now u contains the username the first username p contains the first password after the next again it come back you gonna contain the second one the second username p gonna contain the second password just like that so now we can use this u and p okay you can say i added a list box there if i'm not mistaken yes i added this list box here so this is the name of the list box okay you can say list box dot items dot add okay so you're gonna add the username together with the password okay so you're gonna add the username you will create a tab and you add the password but first we have to make sure you clear everything that is available in that list box okay so that's clear like this simple okay let's test our application now let's see how long is my video 13 okay okay let's run it now Come on. okay here we go you can see you can see the data there Le so let's add another one let's click you can see huh you so the moment you click this button you're gonna insert it to the to the table the moment you click this one you're gonna collect it from the table and put it back to the to the form so yeah so i don't know if i should but there are many things you have to know about it, these things and there are many ways to you can also another way to get the username without using this method here you're gonna go like you know that the username okay like this fields like this you wanna go to fields and then you wanna go to field okay fields again notice that it is this field it returns t field a point okay and then you're gonna go to the first one 
I mean the second one. The moment you put a one, you mean the second one. So the second one is the username. Let's go to the table and verify. You see this ID is at index 0, this user is at index 1, this pass is at index 2. So the moment you put 1, you mean the username, okay? So then as string, okay? Like this. So now you will be having the username just like that. So we are, we are going to test it. Oh, we're just gonna run it without building, which I don't recommend. Okay, let's see. You can see still it works fine, right? So now we know it works fine. But if you want also the the index, that's that's identity key to show we're gonna do like this T do like this so that's why it's at index zero right that ID is at index zero which is this ID here is at index zero we know is an integer this id but you can always even get it as a string okay you can also get it as an integer it's up to you but we know that when you add an item to the list box it always accepts a string okay this is why i a string okay save all run as you can see okay so now if you select an item here let's see uh, this video is too long now so on the next one we're gonna do the delete okay we're gonna delete and then after delete we wanna update okay stop like the video and subscribe